This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Kitty Hawk's twin engine Huey, Tamiya's Hummel, a bunch of books, Car Corner with Tamiya's Monkey, and HK Models Dam Buster. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Hello and welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video series that takes you inside the latest kits, books, and other modeling goodies. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We've got a great lineup this time, starting with Kitty Hawk's 148th scale UH-1N. Developed in Canada and widely used throughout the world, this helicopter was also deployed by the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps. Just as the real twin Huey followed from the Vietnam-era single-engine helicopter, so too does this kit have origins with Kitty Hawk's UH-1D. Those common parts include the main rotors, troop seats, cockpit and cabin doors, and skids. Most of the rest of the build uses new parts, including the body with raised and recessed surface detail. Similar detail marks the tail boom and the new longer nose. Inside, there's a floor with molded diamond plate and tie downs, ceiling with exposed mechanical equipment, rear bulkheads without quilting, structural frames, pilot seats, controls, and instrument panels in front, between the seats, and overhead. Along with the roof that has molded non-skid texture, and aft of the rotor fairing and intakes molded as a single part, are a pair of engines with separate exhausts and a multi-part compartment. The power plant sits under a nicely molded top plate with separate inspection panels, including the upper pair that get detailed with photo etched screens. The brass fret also supplies seat belts, tie downs, slime lights, and other surface detail. The instructions show only the lower nose with a mount for the fleur being fitted but the kit includes another option. Check references to know which one to use. Other features include new tailplanes and a tail rotor, numerous antennas and cable cutters, again, check references, crystal clear windscreen and windows, and a selection of weapons to arm a couple of the marine attack versions, including seven and 19 projectile rocket pods, and the option of either GAU-21 machine guns or M134 miniguns. Decals provide markings for six UH-1Ns two from the U.S. Navy, two from the U.S. Air Force, and two from the Marine Corps. As a bonus, this version includes three resin figures, two pilots, and a gunner kneeling. With so many colorful options included in this kit, you might want to pick up a couple. Our second kit comes from Tamiya, a 135th scale Hummel. This self-propelled 15 centimeter howitzer was built on the Geschutzwagen 3-4 chassis, which combined the driving and steering elements of the Panzer III with the engine and suspension of the Panzer IV. The same chassis was used for the Nashorn tank destroyer. And this kit uses parts from Tamiya's 2014 Nashorn, including the lower hull with molded suspension mounts, rivets, and panels, and the bogies, road wheels, idlers, drive sprockets, and return rollers. The Nashorn's vinyl tracks have been replaced by nicely molded link and length plastic tracks with molded sag. The upper hull builds from several pieces, the glasses plate, driver's compartment and gun mount, the fighting compartment floor with molded diamond plate, a rear plate, fenders, and the front, rear and sides of the casemate. The doors for the rear are posable and there are separate braces for the casemate plates and storage boxes and other equipment to outfit the compartment. The gun's barrel is split in half with separate parts that fit into a cradle molded with the recuperator. Other components include the multi-part breech, working equilibrators, the mount, controls, and gun shield. Several screws ensure the gun's moving parts stay together. The kit provides three figures posed as if loading ammunition into the vehicle's fighting compartment. A small decal sheet supplies markings for two Hummels, as well as placards and stencils for the rounds. This is a good-looking, straightforward kit out of the box, if you want to take it up a notch, Tamiya offers a metal barrel for the main gun. It's a drop-in replacement for the kit part. A nice, simple addition to the model. Hey, while we're looking at armor, let's take a glance at a few new books that have landed at FSM. Starting with Sabat Publications' M551 Sheridan in detail. This 132-page softcover volume is filled with photos of the armored reconnaissance and airborne assault vehicle in testing, as well as in the field from Vietnam to Haiti. The photos are bolstered by terrific profile illustrations. The bulk of the book is detailed walk-around shots of the Sheridan, including the exterior, engine, and interior, all especially useful to detail Tamiya's neat new M551. David Doyle is a well-known name for anyone looking for military vehicle references. One of his recent releases must be the definitive tome on the Chevrolet G506 1.5 ton 4x4 truck. This 448-page hardcover is filled with photos gleaned from archives and collections that show the truck in rolls from cargo and aerial gunnery training to fire service. 
The largest section has hundreds of photos of the truck in service. Maybe this book is just the push a manufacturer needs to give us a 135th scale kit. From Pen and Sword's Shipcraft series, here's Robert Brown's book about German destroyers. Aimed at modelers, this book looks at the history of the Kriegsmarine Type 1934 and Type 1936 destroyers with good photos of Z-39, which was tested by the U.S. Navy after World War II. There's also a section on kits and accessories, a gallery of finished models, and a discussion of camouflage and variations between individual ships. Plenty of info to get you started building a model. Among my more exciting finds at the recent AMPS convention was John Mizka's Australian M113A1 Family of Vehicles 1972 to 2013. It's one of Mouse House's military briefs. Although at 306 pages, this softcover book is anything but brief. Instead, the book is a pretty exhaustive survey of the M113 armored personnel carrier in Australian Army service, including what makes them different from other M113s, unique Aussie versions like the fire support and medium reconnaissance vehicles, markings and camouflage, and hundreds of photos of the vehicles in service from the 1970s until the 2000s and overseas deployments in Rwanda, Somalia, and East Timor. It's everything I need to complete my family of Australian carriers. Our final book is the latest Haynes Owner's Workshop Manual detailing the Star Wars TIE Fighter. In addition to photos and drawings of the classic TIE IN Space Superiority Fighter, this 123-page hardcover details every version seen in the Star Wars movies and animated TV series, including some rare types with drawings, photos, and renderings. There's a section for the versions flown by the First Order in Episodes 7 and 8. It's everything you want to know about building Imperial and First Order fighters and perfect for building some of the terrific Bandai kits. From the creators of New Product Rundown, it's Scale Auto Car Corner. Welcome to Scale Auto's Car Corner. I'm Elizabeth Nash here again with Tim Kedwell. Yeah, so we've got a really cool little kit here from Tamiya. It is the Honda Monkey 125 in 112 scale. While uh, Honda had a bunch of small bikes from the Z series from 64 to 2017, this kit replicates the Monkey 125, which went on sale last year, I believe. It did. Typical of Tamiya's other motorcycle kits, the Monkey is molded in different colors with white used for the gas tank, frame, front forks, and rear suspension arms. Most of the mechanical parts are molded in silver gray plastic. They include the engine with its multi-part cylinder, chain, pedals, exhaust pipe and muffler, wheels, disc brakes, handles, fuel cap, fairings, and more. Sharply plated chrome parts include the fenders, exhaust shield, headlight, turn signals, taillight mirrors, handlebars, and rear shocks. Clear lenses cover the various lights, and Tamiya provides springs for the rear suspension, tiny screws to assemble many parts, and vinyl tubing to replicate brake and other lines. The soft rubber tires show sharp tread, and the seat made from similar material is a highlight. Decals provide instruments, placards, Honda and Monkey logos, and more details. This kit just looks like a lot of fun. Look for a review of it in an upcoming issue of Scale Auto Magazine. And there's plenty to see in the current issue on sale now. Finally, here's HK Models Lancaster Dambuster in 132nd scale. This update to HK's massive Avro released late last year modifies the bomber for the RAF's famed raids against German dams in May 1943. You can see our in-depth look at that original kit in episode 149. Check the link below. That review includes the impressively molded fuselage sections and those one-piece wings, detailed engines, landing gear, interior, and clear parts. Focusing on what's new, there are spotlights for both the front and rear of the plane that were used to determine the correct altitude to drop the bombs. Optional parts are given for the rear lights to put it either in the circular insert under the fuselage or in the bomb bay. The bomb bay modifications include the streamlined fairing for the rear section and modified partial door up front. The upkeep bouncing bombs ends are nicely detailed with bolts and rivets and attached to the body halves. Photos have the body looking smooth, so some filler may be in order here. The bombs bracket and the device to set it spinning finish the conversion. Decals provide markings for a single aircraft, the Lancaster flown by Guy Gibson, the raid's leader. The kit includes the decals from HK's initial Lancaster, which provide national insignia and stencils. Note that there are two instruction books in the kit. The original kit guides most of the assembly, with a new, smaller book pointing out the differences. According to FSM's reviewer Chuck Davis, the original kit fits well with attention paid to cleaning up ejector pin marks. The sheer size of the model was his biggest challenge. This will likely be just as fun of a build. 
Look for reviews of the Twin Huey and Hummel in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can always find more new products in the July issue, our fabulous space special, on sale now. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. Hey, while you're here, check out the Kalmbach Copy Store where you can pick up these books from Squadron Signal. Walkarounds of Merlin Engine Spitfires, the F9F Cougar, the BF109G, and in-action books of the UH-60 Blackhawk, World War II Shermans, the A1 Sky Raider, P-39 Aracobra, F-15 Eagle, and U.S. IMRAPS. Who can't use more references? <laughs> Until next time, happy modeling. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I flew in from Miami Beach, B-O-A-C. The, oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> <laughs> wah, wah. All right, let's try that again. If this is something or other, I don't know, it's German, it's gonna be gone, what more do you wanna know? It's Tamiya, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. 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 Hey, while you're here, check out the Kalmbach Hobby Store where you can pick up. So close. So close. So close.